Hi, my name is Mark and welcome to the channel. Today I'm diving in to show you every bag that I own. As a crafter, I'm sure that you have accumulated several bags in various styles. So today I'm going to be looking at everything I have, what I use most, and then ranking my top 10 favorites. Let's get into it. Usually I end up with a couple comments asking me what sweater I'm wearing in my videos. So if you haven't seen this sweater in previous videos, it is the Field Sweater by Camilla Vad. I'll have that information for the pattern in the description box below. The pattern is available through Ravelry, and I made this out of Kelborn Woolen's Scout, and I held a mohair for the top yoke from Edo Yarns. All right, let's get into the bags. So I have a short list here of my categories. The categories are bags that don't count. Uh, that doesn't really make sense to me now. I'll see if I remember what it means as we do this video. Small storage, project bags, totes, leather, backpack and basket, and then luggage. They may seem like random categories, but as we go through the different bags, hopefully they'll make sense to keep things organized. So uh, in front of me, I have my storage, small storage bags. Uh, these are things that I use every day to keep all of my tools organized. So the smallest of these is my Notions bag or my Stitch Markers bag. And then the largest is this bag that I keep all of my needles and hooks in. So let's start one by one digging into these bags. I'm going to start with the small Notions bag. Uh, I think this is from the company Tagalong or Tagalongs, and I got it in a local store in Shaker Heights. I love the blue color. I think it's great. I love how bright it is. And in it, I've got all of my stitch markers. So you'll see here um, individual clear zip compartments. I have three zip compartments with windows, and they're all attached, so they can't come out of the bag, period, which I like. I like that they're secure. Um, if I'm using this at a local yarn shop, if I'm using this on a trip, uh, I'm not likely to leave one of the pouches behind because it's all attached as one piece. Uh, it also has plenty of space inside for a couple other tools. I keep some tape measures, I keep larger stitch markers, and then up top it's got a snap where I guess you can slide things along and snap in place, and it's got a stretch pocket. I think this is technically a jewelry organizer, hence the clear pockets and sort of all of the silk and padding, but it works really well for my stitch markers. So I keep my stitch markers organized by ring markers. Those are contained markers that you can't unlock or open. The next pouch has um, locking stitch markers. These are markers that can open and close, sort of like um, a safety pin. And then the last section I use for novelty markers. These might be ring markers or locking markers, but either way they're going to have some sort of decorative element to them. So I have a set here I'll show for example that I believe are a custom set for Gigi of Gigi Made It. And they are beautiful orange, Gigi's signature. And then you can see they are on locking markers, little light bulb markers. So I have my preference of markers that I like to use for projects, but the great thing about markers is that there's such a variety because I'm sure we all have vastly different preferences for what helps us know where we are in a pattern, uh, keep track of measurements, keep track of the right side, wrong side, the top, the bottom, whatever we need to know when we're working our project. So that's a go-to storage solution. I love this little bag. Um, it's small enough that I can throw it into a suitcase or into um, a project bag and take it with me for the day if I need to use a lot of markers and get started with a project, but usually it just stays safely tucked away with some of my um, organization here at home. All right, next I have a couple of zip pouches. I love anything that zips. Anything that closes completely 
is great. I don't want to lose needles. I don't want to lose little bits of yarn. I don't want the cats getting into things. So if it zips, I'm a fan. Inside this first zip pouch, I have lots of other zip pouches. <laughs> so um, these two came from a set. I have a third that stores all of my double pointed needles. And then I've got some of these um, like recycled material bags. I think they're really sturdy. They're waterproof, which is nice. Um, so anyway, I love a zip pouch. These are currently not in use, but these are go-to items for projects that require a lot of small bundles of yarn. If I have a lot of color work where I'm using mini skeins or just you know, five, 10 grams of yarn at a time, I'll grab a zip pouch and keep that inside my bigger project bag just to make sure everything stays contained and I'm not losing yarn as I go or uh, mixing things up. Similarly, I have a couple of clear zip pouches. These are from the Marie Kondo collection at the container store. And I think I have maybe six of these total and they were a set that I got for Christmas. So again, nice that they're clear. You can see into them to know what you're grabbing. And again, great that they zip. Two more things here with small storage. I showed this bag, I think in my notions video, I love that it has cats on it. I love all of the different um, thread choices for the cats, but otherwise I don't love this bag. It's not a go-to for me just because the size is um, sort of ambiguous. It's not a small enough bag to go into one of my go-to project bags, and it's also not big enough to be used for a project completely. I could maybe use it for socks, but it zips completely, and I think I would want something where I could thread yarn through and uh, reach it more easily for a project bag. So this bag currently houses everything from bells for some Christmas stockings to buttons. Here's a pack of wooden cat buttons. I've never used these, but they're really cute. I picked them up a long time ago, <clears throat> excuse me, and I always think for the right project, they could be a really cute addition. So I've got all sorts of buttons that I keep in this bag for now. That's the biggest thing with my organization at home. I have a lot of stuff. If you've watched my yarn haul video or my notions video, you know how much stuff I have. And from the comments, it seems like a lot of people out there watching also have a lot of stuff. So anything that helps me stay organized and keep like items together is a win for me. Okay, the last thing in this small storage category is my needle and hook organization. I was looking for the perfect way or uh, a close to perfect way to store all of my interchangeable needles and all of my crochet hooks without having to spend too much money. So I saw some really nice sets out there, things through Etsy, things through yarn shops, um, things makers sell through their own um, storefronts, but I just couldn't tell what was going to be the right size and I didn't have a lot of money to spare for this kind of bag when I was purchasing this. So I ended up with this bag, which is again a, well, not again, but it's a makeup bag. So similar to the jewelry organizer, this sort of bag I think offers really great storage at a really accessible price point. I think I spent $10 on this at a Marshalls. It's not my favorite print, but this doesn't really travel. This just lives in my craft room on a shelf and it keeps all of my needles and hooks in one place. So inside this bag, first I have a little pouch, came from Walgreens, and my friend Megan got it for me. And it holds all of my interchangeable cords. So I like to use an interchangeable set of knitting needles. I always have a lot of projects going on at one time. And I just got to the point where instead of using fixed circular needles, I really wanted to be able to change my cord size when I'm moving from the neck to the yoke to the body of a sweater. I didn't wanna to have to use three or four sets of needles for that. So I thought for me, I think an interchangeable set is the right choice just to declutter a little bit of my tool stash. So I keep all of my Chowgu Red Lace cords in one place, and these cords love to disappear. I can't tell you the number of times that I have to 
dig through my project bags, dig through drawers, um, dig through my suitcases to try to find the certain length cords um, because I finished with it on another project and it didn't quite make it home to its, its um, organized space. So moving on in the bag, this center panel um, floats a little bit and again has clear pockets that zip. So I love that. It's secure but also easy to see what's there. And in here, I think I have my Haya Haya Sharps. So my first set of knitting needles, well, my second set of knitting needles that I ever bought were Haya Haya Sharps. I got a pair of Haya Haya Sharps and a pair of Chowgu Red Lace, a single pair, to test. And at the time, I liked the Haya Hayas because they're so lightweight. They feel like nothing in the hands. And I used these for a few years. I liked the idea of an interchangeable set. And then it wasn't until I moved to Cleveland and started shopping at my local shop around the table yarns and shaker that I realized I liked the Chowgu better, simply because of the cord. The red lace cords on the Chowgu needles lay totally flat. So if you're working on a 40 inch needle set, you don't have curling, you don't have a stubborn cord that gets in the way of your knitting. It just lays flat from the start. You can uncoil it from the bag and it lays flat. So whatever they're doing with that technology was enough for me to move over to the red lace needles. So this is my Haya Haya set that I don't really use anymore, which is sad, but I have them. Um, it could be something that I eventually gift to someone, maybe a friend who's learning how to knit or ready to get their own interchangeable set, and this could be a great thing to pass on. So it lives safely in this bag for now. All right, the next things I have in here include a set of Chowgu Red Lace needles and my crochet hooks. Let's look at the Chowgu first. This is the four inch tip interchangeable set. It's what I use for hats. Um, it can also be something I use for collars if I'm doing ribbing at the collar of a sweater and I really wanna bring that neckline in, then I'll use a, a 16 inch needle that I create from four inch tips. So in here, I've got a lovely collection of needles. You can see they have uh, the sizes labeled on the case, which is very convenient. And then the other side has the larger range. And again, these are four inch tip needles. I think a standard knitting needle tip length is five inches. I think the usual reasons we go down to a four inch tip instead of the standard five inch tip is if you have a personal preference that you like the slightly shorter needle in your hand, or if we're working a smaller circumference. So things like hats for adults, things like the collar of a sweater. If I wanna work on a 16 inch circumference needle, I'll use two four inch tips paired with an eight inch cord to get me to a 16 inch circumference. Otherwise, I like to use five inch tips. For me and my hands, I use my pinkies quite a bit to help uh, guide the needles and to tension my yarn. And so with a four inch tip, I'm not sure if you can see, based on where I like to hold my hand um, in relation to the tip of the needle, my pinky falls off. So when I'm working a whole project, like a hat on four inch tips, my hands start to cramp up a little bit because I don't have that same support that I would get with a five inch needle. So that's my personal preference based on the size of my hands and my knitting technique. But I've got these four inch tips ready for things like hats, things like collars. The next thing in this bag is this little cat pouch. And this contains my set of crochet hooks. I like to use the Edamo Tulip red crochet hooks. Um, they're made by the company Tulip and Tulip also makes 
regular crochet hooks that aren't red. Um, I just like this set. I bought it as a complete set, and I like that they all match. That's my preference. So instead of buying all of my hooks individually, once I knew I was going to crochet quite a bit, I went ahead and purchased the set. So the case it came with is still in here. This is the case it came with, which is cute. I like the little dots on it, but um, I don't know. I didn't like the shape of it. It's like a little pencil pouch, and it became really bulky once I had all my hooks in it. So I used this cat pouch, which I previously used for another interchangeable set, uh, and I started using it for the crochet hooks instead. And I think they work well in here. I like these elastic straps to keep the hooks in place. They tuck into a little sleeve, this folds down, and then the whole thing folds up and Velcro shut. So they're pretty secure. I think I would have to do a lot to have anything fall out of this pouch. So those are my crochet hooks. Let me put everything back in this side of the bag and then we will scoot along. Okay, on the other side, I have two more needle sets. You can see first, sadly, um, I don't know, abandoned in this pocket are my first set of needles. These are needles that I would buy one pair at a time, and for whatever reason, when I started, I was just drawn to individual needle tips and cords. I don't know why. Uh, it must have been what was available to me in my local big box stores when I was first learning. So I've talked about these before. I think they're Knit Pro. Everything has worn off, so it doesn't have a brand on it anymore. But I like that they're colorful. And I want to say these are a bamboo needle, and they're you know a treated, slick bamboo needle. So they're not um, raw or rough like some wooden needles are, but they're very slick and lightweight. They feel nice in the hands. Um, I don't know. I liked using these a lot. The only reason I shifted over to stainless steel needles is because of the speed. Um, I eventually found myself knitting faster, and when I tried stainless needles, I liked how the fibers would slip more. They slide more easily, so if you're scooting your work around or passing the stitches off the needle, um, it all moves a little more swiftly. So people have their preferences. I think wood, bamboo, driftwood feels great in the hands, and eventually I'd love to treat myself to a set of Luca bamboo or Luca driftwood needles. They do them in the sort of natural tones, and then they have all sorts of colorful collections. So that might be something I get in the future. But for now, stainless is my choice. And again, I love the red lace cords of Chowgu red lace. So that brings us to my last set of needles. This is my everyday set, my go-to, one of my prized possessions. I really love these needles. I keep them in a Knit Picks folio. I'm not the biggest fan of big box store shopping for myself. Um, I have a really great local yarn shop. I have a few really good local yarn shops in this area where I live. So when I can, I like to get things locally. I like to get it from a small business where I know the people who are working there and I, I can even I can strengthen that relationship. So I have this folio because I was looking far and wide for a folio for my interchangeable set. And this was one of the only folios I was finding online. So I like the folio. I think it's pretty. Uh, it's got good pockets. It's got all of these pockets everywhere you look. There's another pocket on the outside, and I keep my needle set here. These are the five inch tips from Chowgu. You can see it's a pretty dramatic difference from the four inch tips. Whoa. So if I hold this in my hand, even with my finger, you know, leading to the tip, which is how I hold it when I knit, there's plenty of room for my pinky to be part of the equation. So this is my go-to choice, my go-to length of needle tip. That's the five inch tip. So again, these work with the same cords as the four inch tips. So that's my day-to-day -day needle choice.
Okay. So let me put everything back in its place and zip this whole thing up. All right. So that's the end of my uh, small storage. What did I call it? My small storage. That's it. Let me scoot to the next bag category, which is project bags. All right, now we're onto our project bags. I didn't say this earlier, but I'm assuming this video is going to be long and meandering. So if you're someone who said previously that you love a long meandering video, I hope you're enjoying it. If you're someone who doesn't love that, I always put chapters in my videos. So if you hover over the screen, you can click ahead to see something you might like more, or you can just skim the video if you don't have time or interest in watching the whole thing. And those are also listed in the description box. So one thing I'm excited about with this dive into all of my bags is to find things, to discover things that are long forgotten. So starting with these project bags, in front of me, I have a drawstring project bag, and this is from a local maker in Northeastern Ohio. This is from Ingrid of Sailor Girl Fibers, and I'll put her information either on screen or in the description box. Hopefully I'll put it in both places. And I love a drawstring bag. Similar to things that zip, it's great to know that when you draw the bag closed, that you're not going to lose much. I think you could maybe lose the tiniest of stitch markers. Otherwise, your yarn, your pattern, your needles, your hook, they're going to stay put inside the bag. And you're going to have a channel through which you could run your fiber. So this is the, the pro, the leg up that a drawstring project bag has over a zip bag or anything that closes completely. So this drawstring bag has pirates all over it, and they're adorable. I was once in a production of Pirates of Penzance by Gilbert and Sullivan, and so this is my homage to that role, to that experience in my life. The inside has really cute lining. It's got a little bit of the same fabric. The reverse of that has um, crabs and seashells, starfish. Let me zoom in. So here we are on the inside of the bag. We've got lining that matches the outside. On the reverse, we've got crabs, seashells, starfish, and then these anchors. Very cute, super well made, and really fun that it comes from somebody I know, someone that I run into at my local shop. So that's always a plus. Now in this bag, I have some of my yarn snugglers, and I have a mystery project. <laughs> so let's take a second to look at this mystery project. Oh, I definitely don't remember the name of this project off the top of my head. So I will do some digging and see if I can find that pattern in my Ravelry library, and I will put it up on the screen. This was a shawl, a little shawl or, you know, shawl scarf situation. And I like these greens. I still like them. I use two different yarns. One is the um, tonal here, and then these stripes are a variegated yarn. It looks a little wild on camera under these bright lights, but in person, maybe it looks better here. In person, it's um, a little bit muted, kind of an olive situation, and it's super duper soft. This was a Madeline Tosh yarn, and I remember picking it up at a shop in New Haven, Connecticut. They were doing a, I think they were doing a trunk show. So it was sort of you know, a limited time just for the week, just for the weekend. And I happened to be passing through and I thought, that's fun. I'd never used Madeline Tosh yarns before. So I picked up the two skeins and then I looked for projects I could do with two skeins that I thought would work well with the tonal and the variegated yarn. I have a set of needles hanging out in this bag. It's so sad when things get abandoned like this, but I'm glad that I kept the needles with the project so that when the spirit moves me, I can jump back in and know exactly what needle size I was using and maybe I can finish the project. I want to say that this is two thirds of the way through. It's not supposed to be much bigger. I think it um, decreases and then it's kind of like a 
a small triangle shawl, and the pattern had lots of tassels. So again, hopefully I was able to find that pattern and put it on the screen, and maybe one day I'll come back to this project. Until then, this is a super cute project bag from Sailor Girl Fibers. Let me just tuck this stuff away so that I can come back to the project, right? Uh, <laughs> you might be saying at home, no, you're never going to come back to this project. We'll see. I might. Um, that's one reason I like to keep things together, to keep things in a bag so that I could come back to it. If I snip the yarn, if I take the needles out, then I guarantee you I'm never going to finish the project. So we'll see. I might return to this. I had another Sailor Girl Fibers bag. Um, this is a zip project bag, so it does not have the drawstring option, but it zips completely. And I'm not going to hold this up for too long because it is currently covered in cat hair, which ugh, I hate. Um, I love my cats, but I hate when things get covered with cat hair. Usually everything that I do related to fiber stays separate from the cats. I'll work on a project with the cats um, in the living room, but I don't leave the project bags out. I don't leave the projects out. I don't leave my sweaters out. They will get into them. They'll pull yarn. Um, things will get really hairy. So I like to keep everything folded up. When I come home from work, I put things away. I put my sweaters in a different room. I put them in their drawers, and I do the same thing with project bags. This bag somehow slipped through and ended up with the cats. <laughs> So let me pull everything out of here so I can show you the inside. The inside of this bag has a very cute lining. It's got these light bulbs and it's uh, on a black background. This bag has internal pockets and it's pretty deep. It's got a gusseted bottom. So you could fit quite a bit in here. You could fit a sock project. You could fit the beginning of a shawl. Once it gets too big, you'll have to move to something else. Same with a sweater. You could start a sweater. You could do a, anything for a child, a grandchild, a young one in your life. And it's got a little strap for carrying. So let me put these bits and bobs back in. Zip it up. I love the iridescent zipper. That's probably one of the reasons I bought this bag. And again, this is a bag from Ingrid of Sailor Girl Fibers. Next up are two more bags from a local maker. I showed at least one of these bags in a previous video. These are both bags from Spinning Loft, and that's Paula. So I've got them here. First I'll show this bag. This is one of my all-time favorite bags, just because I really, really love the print. Um, you can see it's a very whimsical, colorful mountain. It almost looks like ice cream when I glance at it, but you've got uh, let me show it in front of this other camera. You've got everything from trees down here to the mountain and the sky, um, the mountain climbers all over the bag, really whimsical trees, and then hidden on the side are sheep, which is the cherry on top. I love sheep. <laughs> on the back side, we've got more of the mountain a waterfall, this little dog, and somebody hanging out with the dog at the top of the hill. Super cute bag. Similarly, the same style of bag here. This is um, a bag I purchased in November or December, and I was really excited to use it for the winter, especially at the holidays, because I feel like the red and the green make it feel a little bit Christmassy. It definitely feels festive. And in my previous video where I showed this bag, I called these cursed animals because of their eyes. Look at that cat. I mean, he's so stinking cute in his sweater with all those buttons. I love it. I love the designs of the sweaters. Really, really cute. So that's, that's the gist of the pattern. Same thing on the back. So both of these patterns, I think I said, are the same style of bag from Paula. They have a pretty deep zip pocket in the front. No surprises in that pocket. Let's see if there's anything in this one. Yes, I have um, a tag from some Woolstock Light and a pen. Good pen. I'm left-handed, and so I sometimes struggle with certain pens. When you're left-handed, 
if you don't know, if you're not left-handed, um, when you write, you push. You're going from left to right, so you're pushing the point of the pen instead of dragging the pen. When you drag, I think the ink can flow more freely. When you push as a left-hander, the ink stops up um, a lot faster than it would as a right-handed pen user. So anyway, I like to find good pens that I think work well for me as a lefty, and I hold on to them. So I have a good pen hanging on that bag. And I think both of these bags have projects in progress. This um, animals bag has my fox sweater, a color work project that I started, a very feeble start. I only did 12, 13 rows before putting it down. So again, I might come back to it. I might repurpose the yarn and use it for another project. We'll see, but for now, it stays in its bag with its pattern. And this bag, I've definitely got some stuff. Oh, this one's fun. So both of these bags have magnetic closures. It just closes the bag in one place, but I think that's great to keep large things from tumbling out. And this bag has a drawstring. So that's very cool. You can see here the drawstring comes up out of the bag. You can do it all the way closed and then tuck it down, use the magnet closure, and that keeps it super secure. So inside this bag, I've got, ah uh, yes, my sparkle sweater. <laughs> Let's see if I can lay a little bit of this out. So this is a pattern with an eyelet, and as you can see, loads of sparkle. Again, a pattern that I'm not sure if I'll finish, Maybe I will. Somebody at my local yarn shop made a sparkly sweater with lace work and everybody went crazy for it at the holidays. So a lot of people picked out their own combinations of yarn and sparkle runners. I think it's pretty. I think if I finish it, it's something that I would wear at the holidays. It's something I'd wear for New Year's, maybe at Christmas time. And that's that. As I said in another video, it's 2024, so if I feel like wearing something that has sparkle in it, I think it's okay to do. I might not really work up the courage to do it, but I'm giving myself the permission. So those are my Paula bags, my spinning loft bags. My next project bag is a bag that I think I've shown here on the channel before. And this is a Bonnie Bischoff bag. It's currently dotted with mud. I was walking through Squire's Castle um, in Northeastern Ohio, and it had rained a lot, and I wasn't paying attention as I carried this down by my side, kind of stomping through the wet grass, it was being splashed with mud. So I need to empty everything out of this and give it a good wash. You can see on this bag, there are all sorts of woodland creatures taking part in various fiber arts. So we've got a cute little bird up here. I don't know, it's holding some yarn. I'd like to think it's holding a darning needle and it's finishing a project for you. Two foxes here modeling their beautiful knits. Two hedgehogs, both knitting. Then down here, oh, sorry. First we've got the squirrels and they're winding yarn. This is super cute. The one squirrel is holding the hank of yarn open <laughs> on their hands, and the other is winding a ball by hand. Really cute. Then down here, we've got a family of bunnies. The uh, mama or daddy bunny is knitting a sweater, and it's all the way over here, kind of wrapped around the babies. And then the hedgehogs, I think I already said knitting. And below that, we've got a line with some mittens out to dry. Super duper cute. Again, this bag is from Bonnie Bischoff, and these were at my local yarn shop, first in purple, and I think they sold out pretty quickly, and then they reappeared months later in orange. So I think that she uh, produces these bags regularly in different colors. So maybe you'll find some at your local shops or online. Maybe you've seen these out in the wild. I think they're really cute. This bag is great because it's got the gusseted bottom, so it stands up, 
and it holds quite a bit. This is a go-to bag for me for sweater projects. It's also my go-to everyday bag. I like to keep a smaller zip pouch with my wallet and um, tape measure, nail clippers, scissors, all sorts of stuff that I might need, excuse me, on the day-to-day. So right now I've got all sorts of stuff in here. So great, great bag, really simple bag. I mean, it's just like a, a tote with a zip, but it works. The last of my project bags is this little bag from Magner. It's a company out of um, Athens, Georgia, here in the US. And I like this bag. I got this as a Christmas gift, I think two years ago now. It is a waxed canvas bag, so it's got a lot of structure to it, and then leather handles and a leather drawstring. So you can see here the way it sits up, and when I pull that drawstring, the waxed canvas keeps it closed pretty tightly. You might lose a couple of small things through the top, but it does have a zip pocket inside. So when I open this up, you can see a large pocket here, with grommets. I think this is a great feature of a project bag because you can run your yarn through it. If you're doing a project with color work or just a single color, you can put your yarn in the bag, run the end through a grommet so that as you pull, it's not as likely to pull the whole ball of yarn out of the bag because that grommet is leading the yarn. On the other side of the bag, we've got more pockets. Let's see if I can show you this. We've got space for pens, hooks, knitting needles, and then um, another general pocket. I've got ice cream coupons in here. Fantastic. And then a zip pocket. So this is the zip pocket I mentioned. If you have scissors, if you have um, little stitch markers, whatever that's um, small and that you don't want to lose out of the bag, you can zip it away. This bag is a decent size. It's not a large bag. I think they make a larger version of this now, but when I purchased this bag or when it was purchased for me for Christmas, um, this was the only size. So this is great for things like socks, hats, anything for a child, maybe a wrap, but I wouldn't be able to fit one of my sweaters in it. I could start a sweater, but then I'd have to, to transition to a bigger bag. So I like it, but it's not the perfect bag. Um, I haven't talked about this yet, but I'm on the hunt for the perfect project bag. I search pretty regularly on Amazon, on Google, on Etsy, just to see where we're on the internet, you know, in the whole world, is the perfect project bag. And I see a lot of the large bags that stand up, fold shut, and have all the clear plastic to see into them. Those are great, those are great to keep you organized, but I'm looking for something that I can take with me that seals all the way, that looks good, it looks like a bag that I wanna carry around, something like luggage, a briefcase, a good project bag, and I want it to be functional. I don't want it to be enormous, but I want it to be big enough to hold a sweater and keep me organized. I like the Bonnie Bischoff bag because I can easily put a sweater inside it, zip it up, I know it's safe, but there's no organization inside that bag. There are no grommets, there are no zip pouches, there's nothing to keep the other bits of my crafting um, safe and tidy. So I'm on the hunt for the perfect project bag, and maybe you already know what it is and you can tell me in the comments. So that's the end of project bags. Let's scoot on to totes. Okay, here we are with tote bags. Um, it feels silly to include this category, but a tote bag is a really common project bag for me. I like to throw stuff into a tote, take it on a trip, take it in the car, um, and go. So starting off with my Cleveland Museum of Art bag. I like this bag. Was it a million dollars? Kind of, um, but it's pretty, and hopefully that money goes to support the museum. We have a really great art museum here in Cleveland. We have several museums in Cleveland, but the Cleveland Museum of Art is a gorgeous museum and it's free every day. So I love going there. I love knitting there. Next, I have just a little drawstring pouch. I think this came from my friend Megan. I don't know where she got it, but it's cute. Oh, 
next up I have one of my favorite totes. This is The Favorite Cat. It's a print from Courier, as in Courier and Ives. And I got this from the Metropolitan Museum of Art online. Um, they have a whole collection of The Favorite Cat. Again, this was a print made by Courier years and years ago. And funny enough, my husband actually found this print blown up huge um, on some sort of like hard picture material framed at our local Goodwill for like $5. So we have that in our bedroom. I think the favorite cat looks a lot like Big Cat. I'll try to find Big Cat so I can hold him like a baby and uh, put him on screen side by side with this bag. And you tell me, you tell me what's the lie. I think they're, uh, they're twins. Anyway, I love this bag. I think he's so cute. And it's a very sturdy tote bag. It's big. So I like this bag for projects mostly because it's a good conversation starter to talk about big cat. More cats. This bag came from another local yarn shop to me in Northeastern Ohio. It came from Fine Points. And I picked it up on the yarn crawl that we do here. It is a drawstring backpack. I don't love backpacks um, for me. They're great if you like them. <laughs> they're great for kids. Um, they're great because they hang out on your back. You're not going to drop it. But for me, I'm enormous. So it's kind of cumbersome to get uh, both straps around my arms and get most backpacks on. So I like it that it's got the drawstring. Um, it's a very thin bag. So probably not one I would travel with. I wouldn't trust that everything would stay in it, but really nice for throwing a project in progress in and keeping it all assembled in one place. Next up, another tote bag that I really love. This came from Barnes and Noble and I saw it on a trip. I was in Barnes and Noble randomly, I think in New Jersey and I think it's very cute with the mushrooms. Mushrooms are in, they are hot right now. So it's my mushroom bag. Most of these totes have um, one internal pocket. Nothing that zips, but at least it's something to organize a little bit of your stuff. I always consider going in with a magnet closure or a snap for the tote bags that I really love, just to make them a little more functional for my crafting purposes. Next up, I have this basic corduroy bag. Um, I picked this up because it was super cheap and it zips. The whole thing zips up and on the inside there's a deep zip pocket. So I chose this because it's a decent travel option for me. It's a bag that I can put a lot of stuff in. It's pretty large when it's um, expanded and opened up, and then I can zip the whole thing shut. So that's nice if I'm on a plane. I always want to make sure I can zip my bag, put it under the seat in front of me for takeoff, and then get it back out to work on my project during the flight. I fly a lot. I fly every month uh, at least a couple of places, and usually I have multiple legs of a flight because I come from a medium-sized city, so we don't have a lot of direct options. So when I fly, when I'm sitting in the airport, when I'm on the plane, I always have a project. I think otherwise I would go crazy. I'd be nervous, I'd be anxious, I'd be you know, counting the minutes away. So I always have a project when I travel. Next up is another favorite tote. This is a very simple medium to small size tote from RJ Julia Booksellers in Connecticut. Um, really beautiful bookshop there. And I think it's in Madison, Connecticut. Maybe it's not. We'll find out when my husband watches this and tells me that's not where it is, or he says, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> RJ Julia Booksellers. Super cute bag. And just a couple more. Next up, this bag comes from Hill Country Weavers, which is a beautiful shop 
in Texas. Again, this is something from my husband. I was not there, but he went to this local shop when he was singing some concerts, I think in Austin. So he will tell me when he watches this, or if you are familiar with the shop and you are familiar with that area, you will tell me in the comments that Hill Country Weavers is or is not in Austin, Texas. But little drawstring backpack. Again, I don't love the backpack element for myself, but it's great that you can put a project in, draw it up, and keep everything contained. And the final tote bag in my stack is this adorable bag with a knitting otter. So cute. Mm, I think this is also a Bonnie Bischoff bag, but that might not be true. I know this came from my local shop in Shaker. Really cute bag. It's a decent sized tote bag, but it's not super sturdy. Um, there's no reinforced element here. There are no pockets or um, pouches, zips, magnets, nothing like that. So this is another bag that I think Maybe I'll go in at some point and add magnets or snaps just so that it's a little bit more functional. But really cute otter. And that's it for my tote bags. Next I have three leather bags. These are all bags that I've invested in at some point. Um, two of them are from big trips that I took, so it's nice that they have that memory attached. So let's get into them. First, and I can't see, I can't see my monitor because this bag is so big. Let me move that out of the way. First is this little leather bag from Massimo Dutti, um, which is a store. It's a, a store all over the world, but I first went to it in Croatia, and I got a couple clothing items from the clearance rack, and I got this little bag. I love the size of it. It's got zip pockets, um, other organizing pockets. It's not gusseted, so it's slim. It doesn't, um, doesn't launch outwards or give you much space to actually carry a project, but it's a really cute little satchel. Uh, another pocket on the back of it. Um, I think you could fit something like a granny square project. You could take your colors and do you know, five, six granny squares at a time, and then move them back to your uh, your project bin or your project space at home. But it's pretty. In it, I've got money. I've got a quarter, a nickel, a British pound, and two pounds. Nice. So I will uh, <laughs> put that back in. I'll have to make sure to take that money with me on my next trip. So that's the first satchel. Next up is a larger leather bag that I picked up in Italy. It says made in Italy. I wonder if that's true. I picked this up in Rome. I was on a trip in Rome to meet the Pope. I went with the Cathedral Choir from Hereford and it was like a state visit. We sang a concert at the Sistine Chapel and we sang a service in St. Peter's Square um, with the Sistine Chapel Choir, the Capella Sistina. And we met the Pope in his little Pope mobile, and then he got out and met us, which was very cool. So that's a fun memory. I remember that we had quite a generous per diem for this trip. We were sent um, by England to go do this state visit, and we were all given our per diem, and it was pretty nice. It was pretty generous. So I remember going out, enjoying the food, enjoying the sights, and using my per diem for that, but I had so much left that I thought, I want to buy a bag. I want to find a leather bag. And there was a whole store of leather bags, and I picked this one, and it was nice because it's like, England bought me this bag. Thank you. Lots of zip pouches here for zip pockets. On the inside, I've got another zip pocket, um, and then some other pockets, non-zipping. And I've got all sorts of stuff in here. A flashlight, thank you cards, lotion, and chapstick. So that's that. My final leather bag is a big leather tote. 
I bought this for myself for Christmas maybe four years ago, at some point during the lockdown of the pandemic. So here it is. I think this was from Yukon. You can see I've gouged the leather a bit on the front, which honestly makes me feel good. It makes me feel good that I'm using the bag and that it's getting worn in. I've got two deep pockets on the outside of the bag, really deep pockets there, one on each side. And then the inside of the bag, it's not super structured. That's the only drawback here, but it's big. It's a deep bag. I've got um, stuff from one of my trips in here. I've got baseball caps, medicine, um, handkerchiefs, little collapsible shopping bags, sunscreen, <laughs> a cord to plug in my phone on the plane. Um, but this has been my go-to travel bag. I like using the nice bags that I've purchased, even if it means the bags are going to start to show the wear and tear. I want to use them. I don't want them to just sit at home. I want to make sure I'm using the things I have. I'm trying to take care of them, but I'm using them. So this bag will sit on top of one of my suitcases, and then on the plane, it's getting shoved under the seat in front of me, which is why it's starting to get a little beat up. But I think, because of the materials, it should be a pretty resilient bag. This should last me a long time. And then I'll just have more memories attached to it. So that's my one of my go-to bags. Two more categories. Next up is a sort of miscellaneous category of backpacks and baskets. All right, let's start with my basket. This is a, I think it's a Bolga basket. And I was inspired to get this because someone at my local shop has one. And I thought it was really nice. She would bring it in and set it up at the table with her project. Very pretty. I like this because it sits up super well. So this is a basket that sits on the floor next to me when I'm crafting and I can have yarn, I can have patterns, notions um, coming out of it, but it's not a bag that I travel with because there's no way to seal it up. This was a Christmas gift. I love the green and I liked the rainbow straps. Um, I have this fun notion on here. This is just a little clippable tape measure. It's leather, but it's got inch measures and then it's got needle gauge on it. Um, the only issue here is that because it's a soft leather, it could stretch, it could warp in time, but it's a cute idea. So that uh, just lives on the bag as a little go-to notion. I also have some cat pins on the bag. I think these were picked up at a fiber festival. Somebody just happened to have a wide array of enamel pins. So I've got um, a pin for each type of cat I have. I have a gray pin, an orange pin, and then a little tuxedo pin. And then over here, one of my favorite animals, a javelina. We see javelinas all the time when we're in Tucson. They're not the nicest animals, but I think they're really cute. And the babies especially are adorable. They all smell, <laughs> but they're really cute. So I have that little javelina pin. Anyway, a uh, cute little backpack. It's a small backpack, but really great for projects. Um, it's plenty big to fit um, more pillows, more medicine. It's plenty big to fit a sweater project. Uh, zip pouch on the front, the whole thing zips up, and it also unzips completely. So you can really open the backpack up. Inside I have one of my favorite Notion cases. This is a little cork case. And in it I've got some highlighter tape to mark patterns, a little mini pouch of notions that I keep uh, in a lot of my bags. And then there's a deep pocket in the back with some padding for a computer, an iPad, a notebook, whatever you have. So I like this bag. This is definitely one of my go-tos for projects because of the size. Again, I don't like the backpack thing. I cannot fit this baby backpack on my body but I can fit it over one side of my body, like a sling bag, or I just carry it over the top. So that's nice, I like it, I like it. Next up I have a super well-loved Lacoste bag. 
When I was 15 years old, I went to governor's school in the state of Tennessee. So governor's school still exists in some states in the U.S. In a lot of states, it's no more. Um, they don't have funding for it any longer. But governor's school, at least in Tennessee, was a summer um, opportunity, a summer learning initiative where prospective high school students could apply. And if accepted, you were totally funded to go stay on a college campus for a period. In my case, it was five weeks. Um, so we were at one of the state universities for five weeks for free. We got room and board and a lot of educational opportunities. So I went to governor's school for voice. I went to study classical voice. I had voice lessons. We did an opera workshop, um, sort of opera scenes, concert, choir every day. Things like yoga, Alexander technique, diction, um, music appreciation, music theory. So it was really all-encompassing, and at the same time, we were there with all sorts of other art disciplines. So dance, visual art, film, theater, you name it, it was there, which was a really cool experience. And I remember one of my friends, Michael Parham, who's now an opera singer, he had a green, I think it was green, a green Lacoste satchel. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I came home from camp, and I really wanted a Lacoste satchel. And I remember my parents saying no, because it was expensive and something I didn't need. So I think once I won a couple of voice competitions in my area and I had money um, from my winnings, I used some of it to buy my own Lacoste satchel. So a lot of memories attached to this. It's just a little, a little bag. It's super faded. It looks really dirty, but I wash it regularly. It's just faded with time and sadly discolored, um, but I've had it since I was 15. And it's got good zip pockets. It's got a big zip pocket on the inside, zip pocket on the outside, super deep in both cases. So it's like I can put everything in here and in a sort of Mary Poppins way, it just keeps going. I don't really use this for projects, but it's a sentimental bag. So it makes its place in this video. And I think it's the last bag here. Well, technically, yes, the last bag is this big old tote that we just picked up at a bookshop in Chagrin Falls a couple weeks ago. I think it's super cute. Look at these animals, these foxes and these feathers, and the mushrooms. It's an enormous bag. I don't know how big it looks in comparison to other things on camera. But it's a big bag. It's a big tote, sort of like a, a big grocery tote or a big shopping bag. And it's very sturdy. It's thick, almost a sort of like waxy canvas feeling. So I think it would be easy to clean. It would be easy to wipe clean. And it's probably pretty moisture resistant. So this bag is new to me. I don't have a lot of stories to tell you about it, but I've been using it as a shopping bag. I've been using it to put sweaters in when I'm taking them here and there. Um, so that's nice. It's a good bag to have. And I think it's really visually appealing. Okay. I technically have two bags left, but they are luggage pieces. So they don't really count in the project or crafting sense, but they're really special to me. So that's what I'm gonna show off next. All right, my final bags are two luggage pieces from the company Steamline. So I've got the piece in front of me here at the desk, and it is a vintage style leather luggage piece. Oh, let's see, it's got the label there, it says Steamline Luggage, that's the company, and the bags are beautiful. <laughs> when I open it up, you can see the lining. Um, it's hard to show on camera because it's a big bag. It's got the zip pouch up top, and then inside is its smaller counterpart. So let me take this out and then um, show you the details a little more clearly. So the inside is fully lined. The larger bag does have um, rollers, like it's a roller bag. So that cuts into the space a little bit. But when I shut the bag, let's see if I can show this. It's got beautiful clasps. It clasps shut. It's got leather straps that you can um, feed through to keep the bag even more secure. And then it's got the um, roller board handle. Again, in the sense of using the things I have, especially things I've invested in, I've started using this luggage 
on almost every trip. So it's beginning to get a little bit more beat up, but I'm using it. If I don't use it, it's just going to sit at home gathering dust. And then I don't know. I don't know what the point of <laughs> spending all that money on it was. It should be a little easier to show you the smaller counterpart. So here's that. This bag is adorable. So I bought these bags when I was first out of college. I mean, I think I was three years out of college and I was working as an organist and I was making enough money that I could invest in them. But as soon as I bought them, I regretted it. I thought I was crazy to have spent so much money on luggage, like something that is not a need, something that I definitely didn't need. And then I was scared to use them. So for years, they sat. I did not touch them. And then I thought, okay, I can't return them. I can't uh, resell them for the full value. I can't get my money back. There's no way to undo this decision. So I should start using them. <laughs> so now I use them and I love them. I take such pride in them. I get a lot of compliments when I use them and they're fun. I love the vintage feel. They're really high quality bags. I mean, they're leather. They're beautifully finished. They're just pretty, pretty bags. So this smaller one has a combination lock. So you all know my combination now, if you can see it. Don't break into my bag. And then when I open it up, it props open with these straps. And again, the small version has the zip pouch up top. And then it's just a, an empty rectangle box. So it doesn't store a ton, but what it stores is really securely packed and protected. So ever since I started this YouTube filming editing process, which I guess was like November of 2023, when I travel and I'm away for a week or two at a time, I need to take my computer, I need to take a camera because I need to keep editing and filming even while I'm on the road. So I've been using these pieces of luggage because they're so sturdy and reinforced that I can put a computer, microphone, cameras, lenses, lights, anything I need in it and know that it's locked up, secure, and it's not going to get dented in transit. So. That's my story. That's the end of my bags. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to do my top 10, maybe top five. We'll see. I think I probably have 10 that I want to rank. So bear with, we'll go to the top 10. All right. I've decided on a top five. So my top five bags are, I guess in no particular order, because I don't, I don't need to be putting them in rank. If you really want to know the order, let me know what you think the order is in the comments. I'll say yes or no. So top five, Big Cat, my favorite cat tote. It's just got so much personality and I love the simplicity. So this gets a top five spot. Next thing to get a top five, my little Lacoste bag. So many memories attached to this, memories of feeling like an adult for the first time, making a purchase on my own, um, embracing part of who I am, you know, feeling like, oh, a boy shouldn't have a bag, which, such a weird thing to say. A boy can have a bag. It doesn't matter your gender to have a bag. But anyway, in Tennessee, in the, the 2000s, it was a little weird for a boy to have a bag. And I sure got hundreds of weird and ugly comments about it. So this gets a place. Um, similarly, this little uh, backpack. Great. Great size. It's got a lot of personality. Mostly I love that it's got all the zipper pockets and um, it fits a whole project. It fits a sweater plus. So that gets a spot. That's three spots claimed. Um, spot four is going to go to large totes. It's a tie between my large Yukon tote because it's so pretty and I love the quality of it, um, but not the most portable. It's really heavy. So similar to that is going to be this large tote. Any sort of large tote where you can just throw stuff in and go I think is super handy, super functional. And then my last top spot goes to my spinning loft Paula bag. I chose this one just because the print of the fabric has so much personality. I love the sheep. I love the, the mountains, the climbers, the little dog. I just think it's great. It's super duper functional between the magnet, the drawstring, the zip pouch on the outside, it's hard to beat. 
So those are my top bags. Um, thank you again for sticking with me for this video. I'm not exactly sure how long it will be in total, but my filming has taken an hour and a half, which is a long time to sit here and talk about bags. When I make these videos, and especially when I edit them, I often feel like I'm putting out the most boring content possible, and I'm sure there are some of you who click on this and say, yes, you are. But <laughs> from the response I've been getting and from some of the comments I see, people like some of this, and um, I really appreciate that. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the kindness and um, the stories, the interaction you give me. So again, I'm looking for the perfect bag. If you have great bags that you can recommend, let me know. Tell me your stories in the comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Can you say hello? <laughs> he looks so grumpy, but I swear he's not. He is an angel, such a good cat. He uh, is like Velcro, he's glued to us or Velcroed to us anytime we're home, right? So that's big cat. I think a spitting image for the favorite cat, right? Right. <laughs>